Andrew, you state in your recent report that U.S. car sales are surging. What's happening in the sector right now? Well, what we're seeing is very strong, healthy demand. Um, uh, car sales for the last month came in at about 18 and a half million units on a seasonally adjusted annualized basis. And this is, you know, coming off a month before with uh, 18 million units again on the same basis. Um, these are really strong, healthy demand numbers. <laughs> to put it in perspective, uh, in April of 2019, a comparable number would have been about 16.6 million. So this is really healthy, strong demand heading into the spring. Okay, so what's driving a lot of this growth in the U.S. auto sector? Well, I think there's a combination of factors. The first thing is that during the pandemic, a lot of people kind of delayed their purchases. Um, and so you have this tremendous amount of pent up demand for whatever reason, whether they weren't working or they, uh, the idea of car dealerships were closed, people took, people took pause and then didn't go out and make those purchases. So now as we see things opening back up again, people are going out and looking at new cars. Um, obviously the broader economic recovery, the fiscal transfers, the really successful vaccination effort, effort all those things are combining in order to create this kind of healthy economic activity. And so you're getting a really strong demand push. Um, now, in terms of kind of specifics and nuances, one of the things that we're keeping track of is uh, used vehicle prices have surged. They're up a little over 50% year on year as of April. And so for those people who might be on the edge of whether or not it's time to kind of make the upgrade, obviously the the surge in used vehicle prices have really bumped up the trade-in values. And so that, that decision becomes a little bit maybe easier if you're looking to maybe make that upgrade. Okay, and we can't talk about the auto sector without talking about electric vehicles. So give us a sense of what's happening in the uh, EV space today. Sure. Well, you know, the, the electric vehicle market is still pretty a pretty small component of the, of the overall buy in the U.S., um, coming in somewhere around 2% of the market. Um, but from our perspective, there are three things that are, that are really jumping out and three things that we think are going to be addressed and, and potentially addressed in the future. That's uh, the sticker price. So EVs tend to be more expensive than their internal combustion engine counterparts. There are um, a kind of a dearth of models. There's not, a, there's not as much selection available in the electric vehicle market. And lastly, there's the range anxiety. People are concerned if they get an EV, are they gonna be able to go as, as far as they want to, as far as they can with an internal combustion engine. On the model selection front, the automakers are, have taken note and, 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 and they're putting kind of their money where their mouth is. They're growing out and they're expanding model lineups. GM alone is planning to launch about 30 electric vehicle models by 2025. Most of these are gonna be available, or many of these I should say, are gonna be available in the United States. So we can see the kind of the response from the automakers there. Uh, when it comes to range anxiety and the sticker price, uh, one of the things we're monitoring right now is the Biden administration's kind of goal to quote unquote, win the EV market. Um, the proposals as, as, as have been uh, discussed involve about a hundred billion dollars in consumer rebates to be made available um, to really bring down that, that upfront cost and around $15 billion to build out about a half a million uh, fat charging stations around the United States to kind of alleviate that range anxiety. So that combination of factors is really working towards kind of helping this market gain more traction. What do you see as the key risks for the U.S. auto sector going forward? Well, I mean, uh, the biggest one there is supply, supply, supply. We've, we've all seen the news articles with uh, semiconductor shortages um, and other key components. Uh, Th these are really uh, these are really hampering production. There are it's nothing on the scale of what we saw last spring with large scale shutdowns in response to the pandemic, but there still are plant closures happening intermittently. Um, this is having the knock on effect of bringing down inventories. In March, light vehicle inventories were down about ten percent, um, and so that's just something that we're we're kind of keeping an eye on because it's having an impact on production. The, the April production numbers have been revised. Uh, production productions have also been revised, uh, revised down. And so it's a little bit of a concern of whether people are going to be able to get the cars that they want. So given all this, what's your outlook for the auto sector in the short and medium term? Well, uh, as I mentioned, the, the supply issues are, are more of a risk than, than the base case. We still see a very healthy 
expansion continuing. Uh, the March and April sales numbers were, were quite strong. Um, the, the, if anything, the kind of exuberance we were anticipating in the latter half of the year has been pulled forward and people are going out and making those uh, purchases that had, they had delayed from, from 2020. So our outlook is of a very healthy market in the, in the short and medium term. And we anticipate that, these, that the supply issues are going to slowly begin resolving themselves. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me, Anthony.